We'll now discuss ways to misuse statistics and essentially different things that you need to watch out for when you're both doing a statistical study as well as reading a statistical study. And there are several different things to watch out for. The first is called suspect samples. Essentially, you should have a couple of questions about samples. First, how large is the sample? There are actually a lot of neuroscience papers that have been published where their sample was only three to six animals. And that's definitely not a very large or representative sample. The next question is, is the sample representative? Does it include you? Until 1993, women were routinely excluded from drug trials and then given those drugs later, not really knowing how they would affect women hormones. So it is something that we really need to watch out for. The next is called ambiguous averages. In usually middle school or high school, you are told that the mean and the average are the same thing. And that's only partly true. A mean, a median, and a mode are all different forms of an average. And these numbers can be drastically differ, different for the same data set. So whenever someone says the word average, it's very careful. You need to be very careful and figure out exactly what they're talking about. Are they talking about the mean, the median, or the mode? The next thing to watch out for is called changing the subject. Changing the subject is essentially just watching the way things are worded. Saying expenditures increase 3% and expenditures increase $6 million could mean the exact same thing. However, they sound drastically different. So it is important to really watch for the way things are worded and make sure you fully understand exactly what that means. The next thing is called detached, statist detached statistics. Detached statistics are very common in advertising. You may see something say one third less fat. However, they don't compare exactly what you're referring to. One third less fat than what? Than a previous recipe, than a leading brand, than this thing of oil that I got. It could be something completely unrelated that they're actually comparing it to. So it is important to make sure you know exactly what you're comparing something to. Our next one is called implied connections. Implied connections is something that's also common in advertising. We can see things like eating fish may help reduce your cholesterol, or studies suggest eating pistachios helps with heart disease, or taking calcium will lower blood pressure in some people. So we're watching out for words like may or suggest or some people. These things have not actually been proving they're just saying that there is an implied connection. They're kind of leading you to think there is a connection, even though one may not actually exist. Our next one is called misleading graphs. Anytime you're looking at a graph, it's important to pay attention to exactly what's going on. Some of the common mistakes to do is not starting an axis at zero. If you don't start an axis at zero, it could make a small difference look a lot bigger. In addition, representing two dimensions with three-dimensional pictures can be tricky. Whenever we know something is two-dimensional, like money, but we see a graph of it where it's stacks of actual dollars, this can be very confusing. Are we just looking at the height? Are we looking at the area? Are we looking at surface area? Are we looking at volume? Exactly those, those exact relations can be, make things very misleading. Another one is faulty survey questions. These are just being very careful the way things are worded. We could have a question that says, do you think the neighborhood should build a new park? And then a question that says, do you favor raising taxes so that a new park can be built? While these may be asking the same question, they get drastically different answers. Another example that's even closer is a question that says, should you allow should your college allow speeches on campus that might incite violence? And should your college forbid speeches on campus that might incite violence? Well, the first one, should we allow these things on campus, a lot of people will say, no, we shouldn't because we don't want this violence. However, whenever you ask if you should forbid speeches, you get a much more drastic thing. No one actually wants to forbid anything. And so you'll get a lot more people saying no than they would if they were asked the first question. 
Another one is called interviewer influence. This is where the interviewer can have some kind of influence on the answers. As an example, if we're asking if you support a new recycling program, and we're doing this by asking people on a street corner wearing a Save the Planet t-shirt, most people are going to more than likely say yes, they support it, even if they wouldn't under other circumstances. In addition, if a police department wants to find out about drug use in their precinct, and they have uniformed cops asking whether or not you've used illegal drugs, they're probably not going to get very honest answers because this is interviewer influence. The next one we'll look at is source of funding. Source of funding can be kind of a tricky thing. We want to know if the person funding the study has a financial interest in the results of the study. Just because someone does have a financial interest in the results doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad study, but it does mean you should be a little bit more wary. As an example, if we knew that McDonald's did a, supported and funded a study that said there was no link between eating at their restaurant daily and heart disease, that might not be a very good study. And I'm not saying there has been this study, I'm not even saying there is a link. But if they, we had to see this paper, it, we might raise some questions of doubt on whether this paper was genuine. The next one is called cherry pick data. Cherry pick data is where we get data on lots of individuals and then we only pick the data that supports our particular cause and do the study on just that data. And we call the rest outliers, which we will define more formally later, but it's these extreme cases that are usually thrown out in statistics. Cherry pick data is something to really watch out for. When the CDC did their study saying that there was no link between vaccines and autism, the anti-vaccination movement wanted to look at their data and do their own studies. And they looked at the same data and showed that there was a connection. And when people started digging deep, deeper, it turned out that they cherry-picked data and threw away thousands of cases to only look at a handful. Another thing to watch out for is truthfulness. This is one of the trickiest ones because it's kind of hard to tell if someone's being truthful. People may lie in a survey, or they may not even realize that they're lying in the survey. If you ask them on average how many hours of television do they watch in a week, they may give you a number that they think is genuine but not realize that it's actually greatly above or below that. So it may not even necessarily be that they are lying on purpose. They could just not realize they're lying.